Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Adeptus Mechanicus as we get into a specific tech priest, the Genitor. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And if you have any suggestions for topics of Warhammer 40k that you guys would like us to uh, create a video for, just comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Genitor. A Genitor is a high-ranking Adeptus Mechanicus tech priest who studies all matters genetic and biological. Sometimes referred to as a Magos Biologist, a Genitor numbers alongside the Logos, Artisans, and Magos of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The difference between a Genitor and a more conventional tech priest is one of training, aptitude, and focus. As is so frequently the case in the Adeptus Mechanicus, understanding gives rise to power, which in turn brings about knowledge, and only those who possess the will and wit to understand that knowledge can properly obtain any form of status amongst their kind. The Genitor's professional obsession with organic life often makes them seem strange to their more mechanically inclined brethren. For the most part, Genitors differ little from other tech priests. They bear the same manner of augmentic implants, venerate information, and understanding of the manifestation of divinity, and engage upon the quest for knowledge in much the same way. The difference is that they are not so quick to judge flesh and blood as inferior to steel and plasma and view living creatures as extremely complex and adaptable machines. Where some are content to make their observations from a distance, others embrace it, seeking to improve their form, not with steel, but with better flesh and better blood. To an unknowing observer, a genitor may appear little different to any other tech priest when swathed in their crimson robes. However, where most tech priest mass is derived from steel reinforcement and implanted armor plates, a genitor may have augmented himself with vat muscles, toughened skin, and organic reinforced bone. A particular and unusual disposition is required to become a genitor, the tendency to view organic life as a form of machine in its own right. Beyond this, however, it takes primarily dedication and research for a tech priest to become a genitor, using his knowledge of the organic science to aid the Imperium in the realm of the biological sciences. The genitor's interest in the organic not only pertains to the human form, but to the study of xenolife as well. The study of alien genetics intended to better understand their physiological processes, and thus how to better slay them, falls to the subsector of genitors collectively known as the xenobiologists. The study of alien genetics is a common field of study for genitors. Such knowledge is dangerous, and many genitors have been condemned as heretics for claiming the superiority of a particular xenobiology to that of the human. Regardless, the presence of a genitor, particularly a xenobiologist, is seen as an asset by explorator fleets and rogue trader alike, as their knowledge of human and inhuman forms allow them to discern the nature of the newly encountered xeno or indigenous species or categorize a new strain of abhuman found in a far-flung world. Genitors are also known to introduce common imperial animals to a new colonial ecosystem, such as the Grogs, a large reptilian animal that serves as a common food source for many imperial worlds. Genitors have a particularly illustrious history. Xenobiologists in great numbers joined the Angevin Crusade to study the aliens native to the region as their realms were shattered by the forces of the Imperium. Since that time, they have remained a noteworthy, if often overlooked, element of the cult mechanicus politics within the Lath and beyond, and they gather in significant numbers to join expeditions into the Coronis Expanse, seeking to be the first to dissect and analyze new life. Over time, three distinct philosophies have emerged among the genitors. The first and the oldest of the three philosophies espouses the purity of the human form as a vessel for knowledge, viewing the emperor's form as an ideal. The second and presently most dominant philosophy amongst the genitors is the apexes, who believe that adversity breeds strength in the organic, and that the perfect organism is the one that has overcome every rival and every challenge. The philosophy itself is an adaptation of the writings of the ancient pre-imperial scholar named Charles Darwin. The third philosophy, currently gaining favor amongst more widely traveled genitors 
and causing concern amongst more traditional genitors, is espoused by the companions of Vogel, whose leader, Heydrich Vogel, returned from a century-long expedition into the Quirinus expanse and began preaching a creed of forced genetics and biological augmentations in order to strengthen humanity for the troubles ahead. Some believe that Vogel's ideology verges upon heresy, and its suggestion that humanity is somehow insufficient in the current state is seen by many as being a blasphemy in its own right. Another duty of genitors is receiving and studying the required gene seed tithes of the Space Marine chapter for genetic corruption or deficiencies. The Horus heresy had revealed weaknesses in the gene seed of several Space Marine legions. These defects had been increased by the accelerated gene seed cultivation techniques needed to keep the huge formations of the Space Marine legions up to the strength in the terrible conflicts being fought at the time of the Great Crusade. The insidious powers of chaos had been able to manipulate this corruption to turn Horus and many of the Space Marines under his command against the Emperor. Once Horus was defeated following the Battle of Terra, it was decided that the forces of the Imperium would be reorganized so that a similar catastrophe could never happen. The Space Marine Legions were divided up to create one chapter of the same name as the original first founding Legion and many other chapters with new names. This event was called the Second Founding, and over two dozen further foundings have occurred in the ten millennia since. During the Second Founding, it was determined that the first objective of the Magi biologists was to reorganize and expunge these genetic weaknesses. Space Marines would be created and trained slowly. The stored gene seed used to cultivate the Astartes implants that turned a normal man into a Space Marine would be carefully monitored and cultivated organs would be subject to the most strict tests of purity. Young initiates would undergo rigorous trials of physical and psychological suitability before they were accepted, and only those of the highest caliber would be chosen. On Terra, the Adeptus Terra created genetic repositories to produce and store space marine gene seed. These storage facilities were used to provide new gene seed for newly founded space marine chapters to prevent cross-contamination the genetic materials of each one of the old legions was isolated. Henceforth, the new Space Marine chapters would receive gene seeds only from their own genetic stock. The remaining stock of gene seed taken from the traitor legions before their fall to chaos was placed under a time-locked stasis seal, although many believed these dangerous stocks should be destroyed. By taking direct control of the gene stock, the mortal adepts of Terra could ultimately control the Space Marines in the wake of the heresy, for they alone now had the power to destroy or create chapters of the Adeptus Astarte. And those were 40 facts on the genitor of the Adeptus Mechanicus. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are creating your own tech priest, if you're kit bashing your tech priest, uh, you can create a genitor. Uh, we're also going to create a, a lore video on all the other types of tech priests. So you have the law guy, you have the uh, uh, the magos, something or another. Uh, but we're going to create videos for all of those, so stay tuned. Um, but now you have more background knowledge. Uh, if you want to kit bash your your uh, genitor, or if you want to create lore for your genitor, um, whatever tech priest that you have, whether he's leading a Skatari army or some other Imperial army, um, knowing the lore and knowing what type of um, tech priest you, you can create uh, really helps out when you're building your fluff. Maybe not so much the, the actual model, because like the guns and the weapons are, are the same for any tech priest, uh, unless you have a named character, but then it's, that's just a named character. Uh, but knowing the, the background of, of all the possibilities uh, really helps, or really like creates good lore. So I hope this video helps. Um, check out the wiki page down in the description below. It has more information on the genitor and then it also has more information on just tech priests in general. Uh, so link down in the description below for that. Uh, if, 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 for my army, I'm definitely going to create a genitor um, tech priest uh, because I like the idea of not augmenting yourself with robotic limbs uh, or like even though it would be really nice to have those, I think they're called flagellums or something, the the tentacle uh, arms or whatever, that would be cool. But I think um, at the end of the day, I would much rather take steroids than have a, a robot arm. Because that's kind of cool to think that, like, it's funny that these guys are just, like, juice doctors, basically. Um, 
but it, it's cool to think like you can turn into the Hulk with whatever research uh, you have. And that's and you can represent that if you ever kit bash a tech priest and then the tech priest is like big and muscular. Like he looks like um, Bane or he looks like some other roided up, juiced up, um, you know, character. You could say, well, this is a, a genitor. And the reason he's like that is he's still a tech priest. But he's been juicing his entire um, career because that's what they do. Uh, and, and it's perfect for that. Uh, it would be, I guess I'm, I'm kind of conflicted sometimes when I think about my tech priest because it would be really cool to have a, a really cool, badass, big model. Um, but at the same time, having robot arms, I feel would be more logical for a tech priest that, you know, has survived for as long as I want him to uh, survive. Um, because, like, having a robot arm is, like, basically having, like, a Swiss army knife uh, for a hand. Like, it can do all types of things. Whereas, like, if you're a genitor and you gave yourself uh, monkey arms, like, yeah, they're huge. And, yeah, you can walk using your hands. Um, but can they spin counterclockwise and clockwise and kind of that stuff? Um, but maybe I'll just create two tech priests. I don't know. And yes, it was very difficult whenever I would read the word genitor. It was hard for me not to say genitals. Um, but now I could say it because I'm done with the script and it doesn't matter if I mess up anymore. So there you go. Genitals. <laughs> Uh, but again, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. If you want to support us, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. Um, and yeah, if you have any suggestions, comment down below. We'll create a video for you based on your suggestion. And uh, thanks for everything, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out.